Hello everyone, this is part 4 of instrument series where we will discuss some other important instrument which are being used in orthotics and gynecological procedure and the link of part 1, 2 and 3 is given in description box below. So here in this lecture we will focus on some other important instrument like uterine sound, dilator, hegar dilator, epistotomy scissor and umbilical cord scissor. So first we will discuss about the uterine sound. So this is very thin instrument made up of metal and it is graduated. It means there are certain markings on it. Malleable, it means uh, it can be bent at an angle. So you can see that uh, it is not straight one. It is angled at a particular position and olive pointed. It means the tip of this instrument is not too sharp. So this is the uterine sound and it is mainly used to uh, identify the utero cervical length. So suppose when we introduce in the uterine cavity and will take out this instrument, some secretion and bloody discharge will present on it and up to how much level the bloody and fluid secretions are present from that point we can calculate and read the marking. So mainly it is used to identify the uterine and cervical length and the second important use of this instrument is the uh, the position of uterus as we know the normal position is anti-inverted where uh, there is an angle at the level of cervix. So suppose here is the vagina and here is the cervix. So cervix is angled. It is bent anteriorly at 90 degree. It is leaning forward toward the bladder. This is the anti-verted position that I already mentioned in the previous videos. What is anti-verted? So when we are introducing this instrument uh, in the vagina and through the cervical canal and the uterine cavity, if we are not feeling any resistance, it means like this, the uterus is in normal position and uh, sometime the position may be retroverted where the uterus bent posteriorly. So if we are not feeling any resistance, it means the normal position is anti-verted. The uterus is bended anteriorly. So the important use of this instrument is to identify the uterocervical length as well as the position of uterus that is anti-verted. Along with that, it is also the first dilator, first cervical dilator because it is very thin. And uh, sometime if we mistakenly introduce uh, very forcefully, then perforation could be happen. It can perforate the uterine wall and can enter in the peritoneum. That can be dangerous. So we should use very cautiously while we introduce this instrument in uterine cavity. Even it can be used to identify any missing IUCDs. Suppose if any copper T is present or any polyp is there, it can sound, it can uh, touch these instrument and uh, we feel something. So this is uh, thereby it is called uterine sound. So the next instrument is the dilator. This is the Hagar dilator. It is the cervical dilator which help in dilating the cervix. So there are many procedures uh, when we are performing MTP. Medically when we are terminating the pregnancy, we will perform certain procedures like suction evacuation, dilatation and curatage and dilatation and uh, evacuation. In such procedure, we need to dilate the cervical canal. So to dilate the cervical canal, we will use this Hagar dilator. Or there is one more dilator that is Hawking Ambler dilator. But this one is the Hagar. So this Hagar dilator have two endings and by both endings we can dilate the cervix. One is narrower and the second one is the wider and there are the markings on it and here you can see I have 9 and 10 marking. So it means the marking indicates the diameter of this side 9 means 9 mm and 10 mm. So whenever we use we hold like a pen holding fashion and then introduce from the narrow ending and once the cervix get dilated 
we can use the other end and by this second wider end we can dilate the cervix so we can use both the endings to dilate the cervix so use it very cautiously because this instrument is only to be used to dilate the cervix so whenever we are introducing this instrument to dilate the cervix we feel resistance and once the cervical canal get dilated and the instrument enter the uterus we lost this resistance thereby we can identify that uh, the cervical canal is being crossed so we need to stop introducing more otherwise it will perforate the uterine wall so thereby we can dilate and we can remove this and the other dilator i don't have right now but i can show you the image the second dilator is the hawken ambler dilator the purpose is almost same but you can see in this image that it has one thumb rest and we can introduce by using only one end so these are the cervical dilator to dilate the cervix even these numbers are also correspond with the week of gestation suppose here the 9 marking means the 9 mm of diameter and if you want to terminate the pregnancy of 9 weeks then we need to dilate the cervix up to this marking so always the numbers correspond with the week of gestation okay so these are the cervical dilator now the next one is the episiotomy caesar so this is the caesar which is specially designed uh, and is being used in perineotomy where we are incising the perineum and uh, the link of this whole episiotomy video is given in description box below you can go through with this all details so episiotomy is the incision where we are uh, giving the planned incision on the perineum and uh, this is we are giving because we want to enlarge the uh, introitus the opening through which the fetus comes out during first stage of labor and this is only be to, to be possible by the use of the caesar it is not straight one you can see the blades are angled at a level so here the two blades are different in size one is narrower one is more wider one is having sharp end and one is having blunt end whenever we introduce in the vagina we'll use the blunt end this long blade to be go inside the vagina okay uh, with the help of these two finger guided we introduce this and when the contraction at peak and the perineum is too thin and bulge at same time we incise why it is angled at a particular angle because it has some advantage if we give incision by the straight caesar maybe it will uh, go in midline but we want the incision to be run laterally so to incise the perineum laterally medial lateral is the most common uh, type so to extend the incision laterally we use this episiotomy okay and uh, when we are incising it is uh, somewhat 60 degree away from the midline so this angle gives us the uh, approximate estimation that the incision is going laterally so that's why we are using this specially designed laterally angled episiotomy caesar so the de detail is being mentioned in the description and the last one is the umbilical cord caesar as the name suggest umbilical cord caesar are used to cut the umbilical cord so here you can see this is specially designed caesar where the tip of blade gives the coin like appearance and these are somewhat broader we can either use the straight caesars but sometime the straight caesar slips off while we are cutting the umbilical cord as the cord contains some slippery material that uh, uh, covers the vessels and protect them the wartons jelly so it may be slip off so to avoid that we use the caesar because by this the umbilical cord will not slip off and will cut with an ease so that's why we are using this umbilical cord caesar so here in this lecture we have discussed with uh, some instruments that is uterine sound hegar dilators cervical dilator episiotomy caesars 
umbilical cord cutting scissors and in next fifth part we'll discuss about some more instruments thank you